Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Thank you so very much for joining this episode on the Life Signatures Radio. It's been a marathon and still is a marathon. We have been talking about the road less traveled and how to give birth to ourselves on the road less traveled. And the process of rebirth, how important it is. I'll say it again and again and again, that when you and I are born, regardless of how we were born, we were pass- passive participators in it. We didn't know what was going on. And that birth alone is not enough to deliver us to our destinies. We've got to go through another process of self-birthing, self-rebirth, you know, keep rebirthing and so on and so forth. I know you've seen those hero movies where a hero goes away to reinvent themselves and so on. A hero suffers a failure and they go to reinvent themselves and so on and so forth. That's what we're talking about even in these episodes on the road less traveled and on these episodes on the Life Signatures Radio. It's a daily show where we talk about purpose, productivity, and resilience. And so we're going to continue talking about that today. We've, talk, we've covered already four ways that you can go on the road less traveled so that you can give back to yourself and you can grow. Today, we'll start the fifth. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Recap is going to help us here. Number one, on the road less traveled, if you're going to give birth to yourself, you have to do the uncomfortable. Number two, you've got to do the unconventional. Number three, you've got to do the daring. And number four, you've got to take out your Goliath. Okay? We've just finished talking about that in the past three or so episodes. Number five. The very last thing that you and I are going to talk about this on the road less travel, maybe not finished today, but a few days down the line. You've got to consistently take the road less traveled. That's it. As in, when is the last time you are doing something that is daring? When is the last time you're doing something? When is the last time I, let me let me address myself. When is the last time I did something out of the ordinary? Something that is making me uncomfortable. Something that I'm, I don't want to do. Okay, like someone coming and telling you, you're the one who's going to deliver the speech. And you, you, you don't want to do it. You've never delivered that speech, uh, that kind of a forum and so on. You never emceed before, but you are the one who's going to do it. When is the last time you did something unconventional, something uncomfortable? That's being on the road less travel. The analogy of travel can easily get us fixated on a practical journey. And uh, we forget that there is so much that we can do at the mind level. Okay? Even at the body level, even at the spirit level, and at the heart level in order to birth our purpose. There are mind-intensive things, you know, several of them, and few people seldom practice these mind-intensive intensive things. And this is their road less traveled. And as long as it stays that way, it, bec- it, is, it becomes difficult for one to birth their purpose. As long as we don't get on that road less traveled. So, I'm just going to talk about this thing. In fact, let us just close the whole series today of The Road Less Travel. Thinking. I have had a whole 
series on the subject of thinking. I think there's a guy called, uh, forgotten his name, maybe Paul Fix or something like that, who say that uh, the reason why many people get lost in their thought is because it's unfamiliar territory. It is the road less traveled. People don't think. And so the day that they start to think, it is a laborious thing, it is a difficult thing, it is an impossible thing, it is taxing, it is, they would rather, I don't know, go do something else than think. And this process of intensive, laborious thinking, it is one of those instant self-birthing techniques that we can engage ourselves in. If I woke up, and wrote all these words or spoke all these words either on my blog or on my podcast and something happened and I lost all of them all the words it's happened before by the way it would be a very extremely devastating thing it would be beating myself up because these were the precious thoughts lots of thinking went into it and actually, it's a book I was writing, actually revising the book. I had just changed the title of the book because of the relevance and so on. I worked on it. Didn't have a backup. Left it in my laptop. Someone sold my laptop. This is like seven years back. It was so heartbreaking. So painful. I can't have never gotten myself to bring myself back to that arduous process of thinking to come up with that birth of an, another manuscript of the same nature again. You see, thinking is a serious business and very many people do not really think and yet even God answering our greatest prayers is constituent of our thoughts. He says, I can do all that you can ask or think. See, you're not giving birth to yourself or to your purpose if you're not thinking. It goes without saying. The second thing is meditation. So we're talking of several mind tools on the road less traveled. The meditation you hear, the one that is on vogue these days, the hippie meditation is on you know, inner peace, trying to empty. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about, friends. I'm not talking about the thinking about nothing. The quieting yourself in the morning with a yoga-like position with a yoga mat. That ain't what I'm talking about, my friends. One of the biggest things on the road less traveled is this. To meditate. It's to be intentional about the thoughts that you are welcoming in your mind especially concerning the best possible outcome to continue uh, creating it's kind of like creating it's already there because you've already done the thinking we've already talked about the thinking but now what you're going back is to you know to to ruminate over it you're not doing the work of thinking anew but the picture, it's like having a vision board of sorts. And all you're doing is gazing on that vision board. But now you're doing it in your mind. Like if you, you've decided that you're going to be the best speaker and you're filling stadiums. The meditation is you thinking, closing your eyes and positioning yourself and thinking and seeing yourself on that particular stage. Delivering this speech and everyone is hanging on the next word you're going to say. That's the meditation I'm talking about. It's a creative meditation on the things that you've already desired and written down and already you've clarified what you want but you're just replaying the tape in your mind. That's the meditation I'm talking about. You just see things as best possible outcome that they could be. And this is devoid of the machinations involved in actualizing them. You're not thinking of actualizing them. You're seeing them as they are. As though they are. The Bible tells us God uh, um, calls those things that are not as though they are. Okay? So that's what you're doing. Is the more vivid picture that you just, you just, you're just making it alive in your mind. And the, the more clear this picture is, and the more consistent you are, the better. 
people if when let me tell you when you drop the meditation of the best possible outcome in your life when you drop it out of your mind that's it they say out of mind out of sight that's it the moment your dream is dropped from your mind from the meditative mind that's the beginning of the death of the dream and that's why even if you don't have the capacity to bring the dream to fu- to fruition you are responsible you are accountable to meditating that dream to fruition it helps you to birth your purpose when you meditate upon it in fact it helps you to change the way you move around this world because when i see myself as that guy who is delivering a speech and everyone is hanging on the next word when i see myself that way i start carrying myself that way the things i read the things i expose myself to the, the things i speak are totally different okay i am giving back to myself that way the third thing is going for this major they these guys normally call them big b hugs right big hairy audacious goals right setting those who are normally taught that think of the best possible outcome in terms of your finances have you thought about it okay add a zero to it now that's a big one okay and when is the last time i had this kind of a, a take in life only 3% of the population were told they do this and it's a road less traveled of goal setting big goals in giving back to your purpose you and i will need to set more audacious and more big goals and as a matter of fact every very many people very many purpose teachers will ask you to set goals that one of those tools to discover is your purpose in those goals it is very very extremely powerful and simple but it's not easy to do it it is one of the most difficult things to do that's why it has on the road less traveled it's a mind tool very very powerful mind tool the other mind tool of course is now the planning and the strategizing of those goals okay because it's one thing to dream it's one thing to visualize but it's quite another enterprising thing to sit down with pen and paper and crack your head for one whole weekend coming up with plans coming up with possibilities coming up with milestones coming up with action plans the next logical thing that has got to be done this week and the next week and next month and next year and whom can i talk to whom can i call whom can i partner with and and so on it's the road less traveled and these things are liberating remember these things on the road less traveled are things are mind tools the only mind tools everyone has this you don't need a degree to do this everyone has these possibilities everyone has these uh, tools to be able to, be, to put to, to put into practice into use but few people do this we've crafted very many things that are a destruction to us and myself included today is very easy for me to you know and by the way we never say this we, we always say this we always say that i don't watch tv yeah you don't watch tv but you are on the phone how many hours on end 5 hours i am on the phone it's very possible as in at the cheapest rate possible it's possible for me to be on the phone for hours on end doing absolutely nothing where i could spend a day i don't know how many days i've wasted i don't you talking about days i don't know how many years i have wasted not planning not strategizing not using my time not using my mind tools being on the road most traveled by everyone else than going on the road less traveled just to see to plan and to strategize anyone can do this strategizing this mind mapping this action planning anyone can do this design thinking I'm using very big words but these are things that anyone without even an education can do. It's about planning, it's about strategizing, putting your desires into action, uh, cre- creating the next logical plan so now they're going to happen. It's a road less traveled. And the more the people do this, the more they give back to themselves, the more they grow. See, that's what we need to do. 
And then lastly, on the road, let's travel. If we're going to use our mind tools, we need to be people who review where we've come from. People don't do this a lot. Someone said a life not reviewed is not worth living. I think we need every milestone, maybe end of week we review, end of month we review, end of quarter we need to review, end of year we need to review. How many times do we do this? How, how many times do we review our marriages? How many times do we, do, do we review our, the relationships we have with our children? How many times do we review our personal development growth plans? How many times do we review these things we don't? And that's the road less travel that we need to be on. So, friends, I could speak and speak and speak, but it's prudent for us to at least come to the close of this long series we've been talking about, The Road Less Traveled, and it helps us to give back to ourselves. The first thing we should do, do the uncomfortable. Secondly, the unconventional. Thirdly, the daring. Fourth, we need to take a Goliath out. And fifth, we need to engage our mind tools on the road less traveled thank you so much for keeping me company all these 30 plus episodes it should be a book (laughs) tomorrow we get started on something else but until then bye bye thank you for listening to life signatures radio if you enjoyed today's show subscribe to life signatures radio on itunes stitcher or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com life signatures radio fresh clean and inspiring